told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. As you fade away Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same I am pleased to welcome you to my channel My name is Anton and today's topic is calcium in dogs It's a popular and broad topic but I don't think the canine community properly understands it So today I'm gonna to tell you all about it in detail Today we will talk about sources and forms of calcium calcium absorption, bioavailability and amount of calcium in dry food. We will go over the consequences of deficiency and excess and also the recommended dosages for puppies, adult dogs, bitches during pregnancy and lactation. And also about the safe calcium limit. This is important uh, for a dog owner to know to keep his pet correctly. Let's start from the most straightforward question. What is calcium and why dogs do need it? Calcium is fundamental mineral found in the body of every mammalian animal. This includes cats and dogs, of course. Suppose we compare the growth and development of the animal body to the more familiar process of building a house. Calcium is not just a building blocks like uh, proteins, but rather the basis or what also called the foundation of building itself. Cal calcium forms the skeleton and bones and on them everything else, organ, muscles, tissues and tenders, it held together. And we all know what is um, substantial quality foundation for building is critical. Calcium can be called the essential mineral during a puppy's growth and development as well as for adult dogs. And here is one of the dogs industry biggest secret. When we talk about a balanced diet, we're always talking about the ratio of calcium in the diet. Like many compounds, calcium has its antagonists. It means that the calcium has a mineral that depressed its absorption by the, in the body. That element is phosphorus and uh, so the biggest secret uh, to a balanced diet uh, that you heard about it so often and so much is just the ratio of calcium and phosphorus. That is called balance. The ideal calcium to phosphorus ratio is one to one, but it's not as simple as it might seem. To give you the full calcium story, I will have to provide you with numbers. Don't be afraid if you don't understand or remember anything. I will try to confuse you as little as possible and explain as much as possible. The requirements of calcium reflect the period of greatest needs of this mineral. This, this is a phase of active growth, the formation of the skeleton and teeth. But beyond that, calcium plays a crucial role in physiology and metabolism. However, these activities require several orders of magnitude, lower amounts of calcium concentration that are required for healthy bones and teeth. For example, calcium plays a significant role in blood coagulation process, nerve impulse transmission and muscle construction and also response to intercellular reactions. Sources and forms of calcium. There are many sources of the calcium in food, such as milk, cheese, broccoli and cabbage, but not, not one of these sources is used in the diet of dogs and cats. The sources from which cats and dogs most often get calcium are meat and bone, contain 10% of calcium, bones only, contain up to 31% of calcium. Calcium phosphate contains 22 calcium, double substituted, and 16 percent of calcium single substituted. Calcium carbonate contains 36 percent of calcium. There are also two easy digestible form of calcium, calcium citrate, 21 percent of calcium, and the rarest but preferred calcium chelate, around 50 percent of calcium in this composition. 
It's essential that calcium chelate compounds do not interfere with intentional absorption of iron and zinc and do not have side effects in the form of calcification on the kidneys, uh, blood vessels, joints and gastrointestinal tract. By availability, chelates rank first, malate second and citrate third. Calcium gluconate will be the worst absorbed at 3% level, calcium carbonate at around 10-30% and calcium citrate around 44%. Calcium citrate alkalize the urine, so it prevents ICD. The chelate uh, form of calcium is combined with amino acids. It does not affect the stomach's acidity like calcium citrate, but unlike other states, it does not settle on the intestine in walls and does not violate the barrier function. What is a significant conclusion? And uh, after all, I can draw you about forms of calcium. Okay, calcium chelate and calcium citrate are the preferred form of calcium supplements, but the natural or organic form of calcium has the best effect on the health of dogs and cats. This you should remember. Okay, let's discuss calcium content absorption and bioavailability in dry food. Remember, I told you before that uh, there are calcium numbers you need to know. Well, there are only three one. The first number is the calcium to phosphorus ratio, which I already told you about. It just show uh, what is more. Ideally, the balance should be one to one. The calculation of this ratio is straightforward. The calcium content is divided by phosphorus content. The main thing is that the units of measurement were the same in the measures. If calcium is more minor than phosphorus, the ratio will be less than 1. If uh, there are, uh, there are uh, more calcium than phosphorus, the balance will be more outstanding than 1. Again, ideally, they should be the same. The second number is amount of calcium from the whole food. Uh, you can measure it in grams or pounds or it can be stated as percentage. This number is often the minimum or recommended calcium value for dogs and cats. But just because the calcium uh, is there doesn't mean that the calcium is in bioavailable form, much less than it will be available or absorbed. Now, here is a fascinating fact what the veterinary community learned from 1993. While meeting minimum level of calcium and phosphorus in dog food, the ratio can be different, not one-to-one -one ratio. Maintaining minimum or better recommended calcium and phosphorus levels will offset the mutual oppression of these two minerals. This is, of course, good news. And so we come to the third indicator, calcium absorption and bioavailability. Bioavailability is directly related to the form of calcium and even if it, if it uh, is stated on the package of the calcium is 10 units depending on its condition, chelate, citrate, carbonate, gluconate, these 10 units will be available in different amounts of calcium for, absor uh, for absorption by animals. The most understandable comparison for everyone is the cup of coffee. Here imagine a standard size cup of coffee. Let's assume that cup of your coffee in general concept of calcium. Now think of how many varieties of coffee there are. Latte, cappuccino, americano, espresso and filter coffee of course. And by the volume that espresso and cappuccino take up in the glass, you can see how the form of calcium depends on its absorption. Cappuccinos always contain less caffeine than espresso and the cuff may have no caffeine at all. Also, in all types of coffee, in our example, the cup, the cup is the same. It's the same with calcium. The figure of the content itself tells us nothing in isolation from its form and two other indicators. It's just a cup of coffee, but knowing all three variables the ratio with phosphorus, the actual content and the form of calcium that tell us uh, about absorption. 
we have a complete picture. Now you understand the calcium content and should always be considered with these three variables or three numbers. You can single out one thing and say, here is much calcium in this food. That wouldn't be correct and would not tell us how much the animal is getting and whatever or not it will be enough. After all, be assured that you will be never find the most valuable, easy digestible form of calcium in dry feeds. Nevertheless, every manufacturer claims a balanced meal. I think you got my point. But not that's all I want to uh, say about calcium absorption in dogs. Let's go back to the point, but in the terms of calcium absorption in puppies. First and most importantly, uh, uh, calcium absorption is not linear. The higher the dosage, the lower the absorption. The dog's body becomes saturated with calcium when an adequate amount of this mineral have, uh, has been reached. Moreover, significantly higher doses lead to negative consequences, such as calcification of the blood vessels. I will talk about the, uh, the effects of overdosing and how uh, not to exceed your dog's calcium limits later in this video. The second point uh, concerns puppies. The ability to absorb calcium well in puppies does not appeal immediately. And at an early age, they absorb this mineral in different ways. The pattern is the same. The higher calcium dose, the lower the calcium absorption. So, does digestion depending on your puppy's diet? Your puppy's body will have different acidity and gastric microflora on dry food and organic diets. At accordingly, different amount of calcium will be able to absorb from the same bone you give him. With so many nuances and uh, seemingly complex calcium issues in dogs' uh, diets, I have a good news. Dogs can get the amount of calcium they need from natural sources. Natural sources of um, uh, this calcium can be a bone or bone with meat. And that's another massive argument uh, for moving your dog from a, to a raw from a dry food. To a raw, a natur natural diet and do it as soon as possible. One type of such proper diet is barf, of course. The calculation is straightforward if you already given your dog raw meat and organs and want to uh, introduce bones. Bones can be up to 10% of your dog's daily diet. If you are not given uh, pure bones but uh, a meat with a bone component such as uh, quality carcasses, then can, that percentage can be around 25% per day. This amount of bone and meal with bone, uh, your dog will uh, never have a calcium deficiency or uh, excess of calcium and the phosphorus ratio will not be disturbed. And most importantly, your dog will get calcium in its most beneficial natural form. Giant and big dogs equally good in absorbing small doses, but uh, do better at drinking medium quantities uh, and much worse at absorbing large amount of calcium. What is paradoxical is the calcium absorption is independent of the phosphorus content of the animal's body. However, it used to be thought that these were antagonist compounds that um, an excess of one would be inhibit the absorption of other. But in 1991 study showed phosphorus levels in diet can be lower than calcium levels. But it is important to know that the new studies do not include uh, the old ones. It only supp supplements them in some respects. If you are interested in read reading what research uh, there on the calcium in dog's diet, the link to my website will be on the description of this video. Now for adult dog. 
The absorption trend remains the same for adult dogs. The higher calcium dosages, the worse the calcium absorption. Based on the result of the studies where development minimum and recommended and maximum values of calcium in this diet. If uh, 1.3% of dog's diet is calcium and only one third will be absorbed. On the other hand, if you have only 0.4% of calcium in your dog's diet, he will get it all. Does it make sense to increase the dosage if the other two-thirds will pass through away? Difficult question. It turns out that the type of the product affects the absorption of the calcium from it. For example, wet foods have a lower percentage of bioavailability or natural value of calcium than dry foods. And from natural feeds, it's higher than the from industry, industrial meals. For dry foods, the actual percentage of the absorption will be 30%. This figure is used by many uh, for their calculations. But if a manufacturer saves money and adds the cheapest form of calcium, to the food, the absorption will be less than 30%. You often hear that the each dog needs an individual approach, but fuzzy and turn inside out is a truth that the food manufacturers entirely misinterpret. Studies have shown no difference in calculation absorption between dogs of different ages, as long as they are not puppies. So, the whole division of food into a different periods, breads and uh, issues is nothing more than a marketing ploy. And here is a fact you are unlikely to hear from your wet. The presence of phytic acid, which is found in the plant food, reduces the bioavailability of calcium in dog's diet. And the logical question for you is why I brought the subject of plant-based ingredients in the calcium section. After all, most of you are sure that the food you fed your dog consists of meat. Well, I'm going to, to disappoint you. It's not. What uh, you have written on the package is 99% not confirmed by the actual composition of the food. As you know, no modern dry food can do without cheapening plant ingredients, and since dog cannot produce phytase, the enzyme responsible for neutralizing phytic acid, dog have problems absorbing calcium in these diets. Now let's take a look at the actual figures of laboratory examination of popular foods and content of such filters in them. As you can see, there are a lot and high numbers of plant-based ingredients. And if you don't find your food on this list, don't be so happy. I have a formula for you to check the vegetable content. Look at the guaranteed analysis on the back of the package. Add up all the protein, fats and moisture. If no, mo no moisture content is given, you can take it as 11% for dry food. Now subtract the sum of proteins, fats and moisture from 100. That equals the number of carbohydrates in your feed. Remember this number. Now look at the main plain filter in the composition. This is usually wheat, corn, legumes or potatoes. Google how many carbohydrates in, are in this plant component of your food. Now divide that figure by the last figure. I ask you to remember to that one. That will be percentage of plant components in the composition. You will be shocked at how high numbers. You will be shocked at how high that number is and how little meat is in your feed. And ca I can assure you of that. There, there are also evidence that dry feeding food lowers the pH in distal small and large intensity, directly affecting the high calcium absorption percentage. Changes the acidity pH of the GI tract directly affects the animal immunity. By the way, I have a video about good immunity of dogs. Affects the ability to resist cellular and protozoan parasites and its ability to digest bone and therefore obtain calcium from organic products. Now, let's touch on the one of the most common myths about calcium that you may have heard. 
It sounds like you need some extra fats to absorb calcium better. It's not true. Unlike some vitamins, minerals are not fat-soluble nutrient. Many experts still believe that the um, some amount of facts affect calcium absorption. It does not. Here is a quote from 1998 study. The effect of the amount of fat diet on a dog's calcium absorption was also studied, and it was found that the different focus groups of dogs with 3 and 20% of fat did not affect their calcium absorption. The same was confirmed in two groups of six-month-old beagles that fed, uh, fed 11 and 33% of fat. We are moving to the next part of this video. The most underrated topic according to calcium for dogs is deficiency. I want to tell you in detail what you as dog owners need or should know about calcium deficiency states and most importantly how to prevent them. Calcium deficiency in the diet is usually secondary known as hyperparathyroidism. Decreased calcium intake to the extracellular fluid leads to reduced calcium ions, stimulating increased parathyroid hormone secretion. An increase in plasma concentration of par parathyroid hormone leads to increase in calcitriol, the most active form of vitamin D, the most, uh, which amount with the parathyroid hormone stimulate absorption into bone as mechanism to return circulating calcium ion to their average concentration. In this way, the calcium concentration in the blood is maintained at a certain level. Chronic calcium deficiency leads to many bone diseases, which is turn caused into improper development of skeletal system up to the bone fractures. And now I will quote you the finding of the three major studies on this subject. Calcium deficiency has been laboratory detected for many years in dog fed dry food or cooked homemade, not raw food. Serious sites of nutritional hyperparadoidism were shown in trials by German Dane puppies. Fat dry food with calcium content of 0.5% dry matter. Test started with puppies at 8 weeks of age and calcium deficiency showed at 5 months. Calcium intake ranges from 0.015% to 0.025% throughout the 18-week trial with an absorption rate of 95 and 75% respectively. Likewise, pups showed marked stunning and show some signs of systematic disease osteomalacia or bone softening when fat 0.12% compared to dogs with higher doses of calcium. Dogs with calcium deficiency in the diet show development delays in tend to soften bones and subsequent fractures. It is Worse nothing that studies show conducted on different breeds dogs, including non-breeds, and were concluded in other years. Nevertheless, all the scientific baggage of knowledge gives us a good understanding of the effect of calcium as the essential mineral for dog nutrition. So, how to avoid deficiency in your dog? Calcium deficiency is more often observed in dogs that either does not get it from natural sources like bones and meat with bones or in poor quality chemical supplements like calcium gluconate, carbonate, phosphate and prolonged feeding of dry food. Therefore, as competent dog handlers, we should be concerned about proper nutrition in the first place. The best food of the dogs are raw meat, organs and bones. There can be no better source of calcium. You should remember this state. If you are still feeding your dog with dry food, use calcium supplements in the form of chelate or citrate. Citrate will also help prevent urolioasis. 
What clearly should not be done in calcium deficiency is a reduce the amount of meal in the diet. There is a highly unhealthy belief that reducing phosphorus has a positive effect on restoring calcium levels, but this is not true. The first thing on an owner should do when a deficiency is diagnosed is to add the highest quality sources of calcium to the diet. This can include shrimp shells if you want to treat your pet. Now, let's talk about excess calcium in dogs. Overconsumption of calcium is just as dangerous as deficiency. An excessive calcium intake of 2% leads to uh, severe skeletal abnormalities, uh, particularly in giant breeds. Studies of excess calcium at the age of one year have diagnosed paralogical changes in the skeletal system in puppies, including osteochondrosis and bone displacement. When puppies are fed 3.3% calcium, osteochondrosis, bow curvature and uh, stunt limb growth are guaranteed to develop. Why does this happen? Because more is not better. The more calcium a dog gets, the better the calcium absorption process in the intestines. Giant dogs react differently to a similar dosage of calcium, but the degree and severity of the response depends on many factors. Therefore, we can only average what there should not be an overabundance and lack of calcium. What makes the difference between giant dogs and small dogs? For smaller dogs, the same doses of calcium did not cause skeleton abnormalities and curvature of the pole. It is essential a matter what the percentage of the giants and the miniature breeds considerably weight is very different in absolute values. So trying the ratio of calcium in dog's diet to his weight is the wrong approach. There is another fascinating fact. Calcium absorption also depends on the pH of the stomach and intestines. For example, dogs on the dry food have problems with the bone, bone absorption. As an autopsy of much animal shows, the bones stay in their stomach forever. True and reverse. When dogs are fed natural diets, no porridge or boiled meat, they absorb calcium better from organic sources. They are less likely to have overabundance and deficiency conditions. What can cause an overabundance of calcium? First and foremost, an overexcess of calcium is seen in dogs of super picky owners who believe that more is better. So also in dogs who in addition to dry food are fed calcium containing supplements, add bone meat or do not limit bone intake. In some cases due to providing dry food where the calcium phosphorus ratio is exceeded, the recommended calcium and phosphorus levels are not met. What conclusion can you and I draw from an overabundance? The most dangerous effect of the excess calcium is disruption in the development of the dog's skeleton and, and bone apparatus. And calcium from natural sources combined with a raw ideotypic diet is the best solution to avoid overabundance and deficiency. My, my website has post minimum recommended and maximum calcium levels for puppies and adult dogs. If you want to check how much your pet is consuming, you can follow the link in the description. Also in the description will be a link to my Patriot account where I, you can support my channel. I would be appreciate if you could post link to this video uh, on your social media, bread forums and personal pages. This will allow more dog people to view this information. That was for the dog channel and see you later. Bye.